I'm going to demonstrate how to program a BMW R53 Mini uh, ECU unit um, using MPPS. There's a couple of things that are important to think about before getting a backup ECU. Um, and the most important is this number here, which is the hardware number. Uh, that needs to be the same. Uh, if you don't get the same hardware number, then anything you take off of your ECU won't program onto the other ECU. Um, so that's the most important thing. And then the firmware number here, it's, it's probably a good idea to get the same firmware number as well. Um, I've programmed a few of these ECUs and if the hardware number is the same, then the program seems to program OK onto the other ECU units. But um, if you can get one with the same firmware number, then it's probably a good idea. So I'll go over the equipment I've got here. So I've made my own uh, bench testing unit. Um, you can program in-car with just a, an ODB connector. Um, I've got a, a Bluetooth um, ODB um, device. Um, you, this can be uh, a USB one as well. I've got USB one, they work perfectly fine. Um, I not use this for programming, but I use this for doing diagnostics afterwards just to, to show the difference uh, once it's been programmed. I've got MPPS uh, V16 device for programming. Um, I don't worry too much about this bit. I haven't finished off my, uh, this is going to be a, sort of an emulator in the end to, to test things out on these, on these ECUs. Uh, what I'm using this for is just to show on, on the bench how to program it. So I've got like an ignition switch here to prove, to show it being switched on and off when required. And then finally I've got a, a Windows XP laptop, just an old laptop which I no longer use. And I've got um, some software which came with these devices uh, programmed onto it um, so that I can do the programming. Okay, so the first thing to do is take the ODB connector and plug in the MPPS device and then uh, power on the ignition. So on my simulator I'll power on the ignition switch and you see, the, uh, I don't know if you can see these LEDs, the, uh, these yellow ones here are the ignition um, coil LEDs and that just shows you that software is running really. So at the minute my, my rig's not complete but that's uh, handy to, to be able to see that. So first of all, I'll click on ECU ID and it tells me what the ECU ID information is. And this is the hardware number up here, uh, 7520019. First of all, I'll write an image file which has a different hardware number and that'll show it failing. Um, so one with an N down here. If uh, I click on, so it says it shows you the hardware number in there it is different because the one that was in the file was 7520019. Uh, it was, it's on the ECU, sorry, and uh, this is a different hardware number. Uh, so if I click on OK, this should fail. And what I'll do is I'll fast forward uh, some of this video because when it's programming, it takes a little while to program, just a minute or so. OK, so that failed, uh, and it just says uh, an error on the screen. Uh, what I'll do then is I'll write a valid image. Um, so the um, the firmware version on the actual ECU is M, so what I'll do is I'll write one which is L. So this this one has a firmware of L. Clicking on OK. Okay, so that wrote successfully. Uh, but before I continue, I'll just go over the things which are on the screen. So this is the file which I've uh, written uh, from uh, and here's the hardware number of the image which is in the file 752019 and this is the hardware number of the ECU itself 752019 so that's why the the write succeeded okay uh, and from the file this is the software number 752111550 uh, and from the ECU this is the current software number which is on there 7542751 which is the one which which um failed to write when I just just tried to write it just a minute ago. Uh, and then as you can see the Siemens um, firmware number doesn't change. Uh, so okay so I'll switch the ignition off. Click on OK. Okay so now I'll switch the ignition on. 
click on OK. And now I, I should be able to read the ECU ID again. So this is the, uh, the one which we've just written. So what I'll do now is I'll switch over the ODP connector to, uh, from the MPPS to the uh, ODB diagnostics. Uh, and then I'll click to connect to the Bluetooth Elm device on the laptop. That's connected. And then uh, in the Scan Master software, I'll click connect. It should make a connection over that Bluetooth device to the ECU. Okay, it's connected. Uh, so if I click on vehicle info and read, okay, so this VIN number, that's unchanged. That's the original. Uh, that's the original VIN number of the ECU. So when you write over this MPPS stuff, it doesn't change the VIN number on the ECU. So that's something which it seems to mask off. So this wouldn't be any good if you wanted to make a backup copy of your ECU. What you'd have to do is you'd have to have the image you write to it would have to be an immobilizer disabled image and i think there's people that which create immobilizer disabled images on the internet um, uh, but if you wanted to just change your the mapping information in your ecu or something like that then it would be okay to write um, this to your EC, your current ecu but i would always recommend never write to the over the original ecu because you want that as a full back so you want that to always be unchanged so maybe read the image from it to write to another ecu but at the minute with this software you can't do that unless you then get it immobilized or disabled um so i'll look into actually uh doing it so that it can be written but that's a way off at the minute i guess um, but the uh, the other information like the software number and that, so that's the hardware number as the software number and as you can see that's no longer the software number of the original image on on the ECU it's the uh, updated one which we wrote.